Uh, Cindy Sheehan, you know, I, 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 Genesis was one of the first places when you first got started, I remember before you were in the newspaper, to interview you about your, your trek. And you're another example of what a motivated person whose heart and mind's in the right place can do. And, uh, you were that, really that, that, that focal point that, that, that really made the war unpopular. If people can touch one zeitgeist or, you know, one pillar, one point, uh, you know, one Rosetta Stone that 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 really exposed this war. Uh, it's Cindy Sheehan and and her great supporters in your story. The other the other problem and sad problem is if anybody can touch a zeitgeist or a keystone and say what has allowed it to continue and actually expand and really destroyed a lot of your work is Barack Obama. Uh, and I want to get your take on that statement I just made, but it's great to have you here with us. Oh, Alex. It's nice to be finally in studio with you. It is good. I mean, I feel like I know. I mean, I've met you many times on the road and right. at Crawford and Denver and California and places, right. but uh, to be here now in studio with you is so great. You've got the floor, but I'd like you to speak about the statement I just made about the parties, mm -hmm. the betrayal, the false hope, where this country's going. Well, of course, I, you know, I think you're, you're perfectly r correct when you say that. I think in the summer of 2005, many people recognized that that was going to be you know the the point that the the um, you know what am I trying to say the the popularity of the war of George Bush was going to turn it was going to turn there the tipping point right the tipping point right and so many organizations came out to try and co-opt that movement and they did co-opt the movement uh, MoveOn.org is one of the biggest organizations this is the biggest organization that came out and co-opted it and used it to just elect Democrats and now we see we have a and by the way I'm, I'm just interrupting they gave you a chance to sell out didn't they they did and I refused now see that, and in the end, they will be known for what they truly are, George right. Soros minions, and you'll be known as a true humanitarian. But, right. but I'm sorry for interrupting. No, I mean, okay. maybe you should talk about what happened and, and, and how they used you, but as soon as they were about to get their Rahm Emanuel has cynically laugh, yeah, we, we got elected on anti-war, we're pro, even more, uh, in some cases, more pro-war than Bush. Right. Explain that to people. Well, they did. Move on did give me a chance to uh, sell out my position on troops home immediately and completely. And it was in my trailer in Crawford, Texas, uh, one of the last days of Camp Casey. And, of course, I refused them, and so they cut all ties with me. Describe that story for those that don't know. This is key. Right. Well, this is history. Yeah, well... I mean, the war is collapsing. 80% uh -huh. you know, are against it. It's totally a fraud. Millions dead. And... Uh, you know, Bush has tried to demonize you. The neocons had it; it failed, and then here come the Judas goats. Tell people that story. Well, then, um, you know, they sent out their big guns from Washington D.C. to try and convince me to support, you know, a troops home eventually bill that the Democrats were trying to push through, and and me and the the very dedicated people we refused to support that, and we wanted to keep our. Um, you know, our position of troops out completely. And now we know that the Democrats were only co-opting Camp Casey to get back in power. They had no intention of ending the war. Just look what's happening right now. Nancy Pelosi is literally browbeating her, her caucus to vote for the war funding because every Republican's going to vote against it. And so she needs every Democratic vote. But 51 Democrats voted against it last week. So she's browbeating all those people to fund the war and we have a democratic senate a democratic congress and a democratic presidency and we're still going in the same direction and um, so I left the democratic party because I saw that they were the same as a republican party and ran against Nancy Pelosi in her district as an independent and the, the system is definitely stacked against us and our voices for sure yeah, that was a rigged deal. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So I'm more into, um, you know, like we you were talking about before, you just mentioned something, that there's really no left or right. There's no liberal or conservative. Those those things, those labels don't make sense anymore at all. If Obama's left, then what am I? If Hillary's left, then what am I? You know, if you're far right, then what is... Um, Bill O'Reilly. You know, these these labels just don't make sense to us anymore. So, Alex, I want to ask you a question, because I do have my own radio show now. 
also, so some a lot of times I get to ask questions. Oh, good, yeah. <laughs> I, I like being interviewed. I actually do better when I get interviewed, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be on the air in Dallas on Sundays at 3 now, so I'm very excited about that. Oh, good. On, on Rational Radio. Yeah, they need to hear this voice. What would you? What do you call yourself? What do you call yourself? You know, politically, economically, socially? Anti-slavery. I don't want to be under corporate slavery, government slavery. I understand anything big that's undemocratic and unlibertarian is going to be hijacked by special interest. And so I'm pro-education. I want people to know how the world really works. And uh, I want the Ten Amendments. I want them all. Mm -hmm. And I know that there may have been differences in the parties before, and, and there were in some times in history, but now there certainly isn't. And special interest, I mean, we've had Democratic and Republican leaders in the House and Senate come out and say that uh, foreign banks, offshore banks, they're not even foreign, they're offshore, they have no country, pirates. Pirates are on the sea, they're not in any nation. Right, right. That, that they own and run Congress completely. Well, one of our senators just said that a couple of weeks ago, right? It was Carl Levin. Said, was it Carl Levin? He said it. He so said, bankers still own Congress. That, that's, that's what he said. Uh, he told the truth. But now I have another question for you. You don't ever advocate any violence, do you? No. I've never heard you advocate any violence. I, I wouldn't be uh, on your show. show what people I, say I do? Yeah, you know, I, I've heard that. The, the, um, I think, because you said you, you support all the amendments from 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. And this is what the problem in our country. We think that we can pick and choose what amendments that we like. And then we don't have to like the other ones. I don't like guns. I hate guns. I don't own guns. But the Second Amendment gives us the right to to keep and bear arms, doesn't it? Yes. And, you know, all the amendments have laws that have passed to restrict the amendments. And, and as long as they're not too draconian. But the, the thing is, is that we are trying to support this Constitution that our leaders and the banks and the, and the corporations have destroyed. The well, that's what they do. They, the they sell one person, one group, I'm getting rid of this one, and then let's get rid of that one, or let's restrict this one, let's restrict that one. And pretty soon they're all gone. But, but no, that's what they do, and, and, and that's the new media tactic, is that... Uh, Take 9-11 Truth. Never anything violent, never did anything wrong. And for two years, I would see Fox, CNN, MSNBC say 9-11 Truthers are violent. They work with Al-Qaeda. They need to be arrested. That's Glenn Beck. They say, about me. They say that about me, too. So, so I'm it, an Al-Qaeda supporter because I want peace. Exactly. So yeah. now, uh, this horrible, deranged, 88-year-old World War II vet, that doesn't mean all World War II vets support killing, killing people at the Holocaust right. Memorial. Right. Well, just like because the guy supposedly signed a 9-11 petition, there's... I've been hundreds of those, and this one had 16,000 signatures, that now uh, Glenn Beck said, quote, that 9-11 Truth sees him as a hero because he signed a uh, petition. No one ever said that. It's, it's, it's pure guilt by association, and that's pure intimidation is to get us off uh, kilter. Let's talk about this media, left and right, that supported the murder of over a million Iraqis. Absolutely. Let's talk about, see, see they always want to get it off of them and on to us, when clearly there's torture going on. Clearly, Obama said he wouldn't hire any lobbyists, and that's all he did. Right. Clearly, he said he was going to make all the, the bailout money and the uh, stimulus money public, mm -hmm. and he's made it a secret. Right. So, you know, clearly, this guy is on the telephone. They admit every week with Bush still. Right. I mean, this is a... You saw him hugging and kissing, right. literally, when he got on the helicopter, and I'll call you next week. I was reading their lips. Yeah. I mean, you could see it. And this is a big sick joke in keeping all of Bush's people and Clinton's people coming right. in. Right. I mean, talk about false hope. You know, that's like uh, kidnapping a little kid with a hope he's going to get some candy when he gets in the van. Right. And, and then now the little kid's kidnapped. It hasn't dawned on him yet. He's in the car with a monster. Mm -hmm. And so you got a lot of Democrats now are saying, ah, what's wrong with torture? What's wrong with secret arrest? What's wrong with, you know, keeping the war going? And so, of course, they've got to say we're immoral or we're violent. And that's what's wrong with the so-called anti-war movement. They're only an anti-Republican war movement. And Obama has put half of the country to sleep thinking that if he's doing it, it's okay. Cindy, let's talk about Obama. And I mean, I'd like to hear in your own words. I've heard you talk about the two parties being twins and mm -hmm. challenging Democrats. A lot of them are getting disillusioned as approval ratings dropped. But the Democrats said, well, what are we going to do? Put a Republican in. No, what we do is make it about issues and say we're not voting for anybody that supports the war. Right. And that we're going to try to impeach anybody that doesn't sign a pledge that when you get elected, you're going to vote against it. 
Uh, and, and it's like that on all these issues where the people are all over here, and whatever the people want happens to be also in the Bill of Rights Constitution on most issues, and then over here the government's always doing the opposite. So, I mean, call them out here on air. I mean, mm -hmm. looking at the camera out there, what does Cindy Sheehan say to these Democrats? Because I've been out on the streets talking to them, and they say, first it was, oh, he's God, he's going to fix it all. Now it's, yeah, I know he had to lie to get in, but at least he's not Bush. <laughs> well, you know what? But that's true. He's not Bush. Who is? Bush is Bush. But he's continuing the policies of Bush. I have people on the so-called right call, uh, email me and say, you're a hypocrite because you oppose Bush's wars, but you don't oppose Obama's wars. They're doing the same thing. And I say, first of all, I do oppose Obama's wars, but you're the hypocrite if you don't support Obama's wars because you supported Bush wars. But now on the Democratic, on the Democratic left, it's the same thing. If you oppose Bush's policies and you support Obama's, that's hypocritical. And that's what allows our leaders to get a, literally get away with murder. That's it. They murder and torture.